guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about Kino Lorber. In fact, this is the largest Kino Lorber spotlight to date in Serial at Midnight history. That's really saying something, because we've done 10 previous Kino Lorber focused videos. This is our 11th one. There's a playlist. I'm going to link to the playlist in the description of this video. Uh, but I love Kino Lorber. And as you can see, the two shelves speak for themselves. We've talked about well over 100 releases here at Serial at Midnight, but we've never done a spotlight that's going to be as expansive as this one. I've got 44 Kino Lorber releases here that, that run the spectrum, all different genres. It's, it's kind of remarkable how how wide the Kino Lorber spectrum is for the releases. Uh, some of this is my sale haul from the March sale, the March Madness sale that has ended. Hopefully you are following us on social media because we always promote sales. We don't do those in videos usually. We do them, uh, that, that content is temporary, right? Sales, announcements, things like that. Watch our social media for that. But uh, I, this is my sale haul, but not not all of this. Most of this, i got to be honest with you guys, most of this was sent to the channel by someone who I believe wishes to remain anonymous. Um, they're probably watching this video, and if you are, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's much appreciated, and this is going to go a long way to future reviews. You know, this is not going to be a review video. This is going to be a, hey, look, this is out video. Product awareness, right? Uh, but we cover stuff. It's important to me that we don't just say, hey, I bought this, that we also come back and review, talk about it, see what we think about it. So these will all show up in future review paloozas. The review palooza stack is growing, my friends, and a lot of Kino stuff is in that because I've been watching this stuff. So let's just kick it off with um, Stretch. This is a, I won't spend too much time on these, 2014, uh, it's got Patrick Wilson, it's got Ed Helms, James Badgedale, Brooklyn Decker, Jessica Alba, Stretch. Then we have The War, Kevin Costner, Elijah Wood, this is 94? 94. I, I tend to get, I know I've seen this movie, I tend to get this confused with A Walk in the Clouds for some reason. Um, but this is one of those coming of age movies, uh, Kevin Costner is a returning Vietnam veteran. Elijah Wood is like, you know, maybe last summer of innocence, that sort of a thing. Um, and anyway, it's, uh, 94 and it is, um, really cool stuff. You know what? I'm going to, here's what I'll do. Each, I can't go through special features for 44 movies. So I'm just going to hold these up briefly. If you want more information, you can pause. I think that it's important that we note that Kino Lorber often includes an audio commentary. This is the war by someone in the know. Um, a film enthusiast and appreciator, Ladybug, Ladybug. This is a 1964 film uh, produced and directed by Frank Perry. Screenplay by Eleanor Perry. This is the back of the box. Hopefully the resolution is good enough, too, that if you want to, you can just freeze frame. And you can read the back of the, the package. Buried Alive. First of all, look at this beautiful slipcase. Kino doesn't do a ton of slipcases. They're doing more than they used to. Spaceballs had a slipcase. By the way, check out our Spaceballs 4K review. Um, there's a few down there. Trilogy of Terror has a slipcase. The the Night Strangler, you know, the Kolchak film. Uh, so let's let's pop this out there. Uh, this is a 1990 film with Tim Matheson. Wasn't Tim Matheson Johnny Quest? Now, if I'm wrong, I'm going to cut this out, and you'll never know. But my memory is that Tim Matheson was the voice of Johnny Quest in the 60s. Um, Fun fact right there. Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, William Atherton, Hoyt Axton. Uh, Hoyt Axton, I love. He was a, so he's the dad in Gremlins that brings Gizmo back home. But he was also a success. Well, I don't know how successful he was, but he was he was certainly creatively successful. Uh, Singer-songwriter of the country persuasion in the music scene during the 70s and the 80s. Uh, he's got a song about the devil, the dealer, and a cat named Kalamazoo. That's awesome. Look it up on YouTube. Buried Alive, let me flip this over. So no alternate artwork here. Sometimes Kino will give us alternate artwork. That's not the case here, but it is a very sharp, ah, very sharp slip cover here. There's the back of the box. Captain Newman, MD. Oh, you guys, Gregory Peck. Wait for it. Tony Curtis. <laughs> Angie Dickinson. Oh, Angie Dickinson. Bobby Darren. Mr. Mac the Knife. 
Uh, this is, I, I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this. Uh, love my, Kino Lorber has been such a friend. Hold on, maybe it's, can we see, where is the, where is the Tony Curtis collection? Kino Lorber has been such a friend to Tony Curtis's catalog. Uh, they've got the Tony Curtis collection. They've got this, they've got, um, his, uh, the, 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 the one of the Alibaba movies, right? And he's the the line we talked about it in a past Kino Lorber. I'm spending too long on these already, you guys. It's gonna be a problem. And he's like, and yonder valley lies the castle of my father. That's the line. He doesn't actually say the line, but that's the that's the lore. Like play it again, Sam. Never. That's not a thing. It's it's apocryphal. Uh, Rough night in Jericho. Oh, I want to talk so much about this. George Pappard, Dean Martin, Gene Simmons. Not like, uh, not that Gene Simmons. Uh, not the God of Thunder, but the the delightful actress Gene Simmons. Um, oh, save it for the review, Palooza Heath, 1967. It's really good. It's really good. Commentary by Sam Dayan. Dehan. DC Cab. Oh my gosh, Mr. T. Uh, who else is in this? It's got a, a young Adam Baldwin, who would fan culture knows him from Firefly, right? But he's he's in here. Um, this is written and di- written and directed by Joel Schumacher. Uh, doesn't seem like it would be a Joel Schumacher. It's a, a Saint Elmo's Fire is Joel Schumacher, right? Or is it about last? It's Saint Elmo's Fire. Uh, it doesn't seem like Schumacher's Bailiwick, but it's really good, and it's crazy how I mean, look, this is pre. What is this? 1983. Yeah, so this is like peak A Team, Mr. T success. Here's the back of the. Did I do the back of it already? Um, already the narrative is forming, right? They're like Kino Lorber, <laughs> like DC Cab, Tony Curtis movies. And uh, old Hollywood magic and new stuff that needs a spotlight. Texas Across the River. This is another Dean Martin movie. Dean Martin, Alain Delon, Joey Bishop. That's two Rat Packers for your money. Uh, Rosemary Forsyth. This is a comedy. This is a Western comedy. Save it for the Save it for the review. Palooza Heath, 1966, right? Yeah, 1966. Uh, the All Nighter. Susanna Hoffs, the um, the the lead singer, and she played guitar as well, right? From the Bangles. Uh, this was her, I believe, this was her feature film debut. Oh, I want to, I want to spend so much time on these, but we're not going to do it. This is not the place. It, it's it's a really cool. Mm, see, I'm already doing it. 1987. It's a really cool. Uh, like it's our last summer. It's it's our last. It's our last hurrah before we all go our separate ways. Set in 19, well, made in 1987, and it's really um, steeped in the style. I'm reviewing it now. All right. Did I hold up the back? Yeah, there we go. A man called Adam Sammy Davis Jr. That was a terror. Hey, babe, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Did it just bust out in Mr. Bojangles. Um, this is a, th- yes, a third Rat Packer, also Louis Armstrong, or Louis Armstrong, Ossie Davis, Cicely Tyson, Mel Torme. We've got a younger Mel Torme. If you guys ever heard any of Mel Torme's exotica and jazz, like he was a certain kind of square in the 60s, but so good. You know, in the in the 60s, things kind of split, and you had the psych the psychedelic movement, you had the hippie movement, and then you had people like the Rat Pack, Sinatra, Dean Martin, who are kind of observing these things going on, and they're steeped in the old style, right? They're steeped in big band and the tradition, but they kind of embraced the changing times in their own ways. And Mel Torme was one of those guys that it's it's kind of a bizarre artifact now, but it's kind of awesome at the same time. A man called Adam. Uh, there's the description and the back of the package. The Return of the Musketeers, the Richard Lester sequel to his Three Musketeers, because he directed the Three Musketeers as well, right? This is the sequel. Uh, let's see, who's the, what's the cast here? It's um, Michael York, Oliver Reed, come on, uh, Frank Finley, C. Thomas Howell, Kim Cattrall, Geraldine Chaplin, uh, Christopher Lee, Gandalf. You will not take the Palantir, Gandalf. 
Look into the eyes of Sauron. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's... Um, oh, and Richard Chamberlain. I, I don't want to leave off Richard Chamberlain. 1989. Oh, I didn't, I didn't show you the back of the package. Okay, Rick Springfield, hard to hold. Rick Springfield, of course, uh, Jesse's girl, superstar of the 1980s. He's got a great autobiography too. Anyway, this is the Rick Springfield film. He was an actor. What's the? He was in the pilot that for the show that would become Forever Nights, and he plays. I think it's just called Nick Knight, not Nick at Night, though equally awesome. Nick Knight was a, a vampire. It was the pilot. It was like a TV pilot for what would become Forever Night, and he is Nick Knight. But this is not that. This is hard to hold. Hey, Keno Lorber, can you guys get uh, Nick Knight? Because that'd be really cool. Um. Got, uh, what is it, 1980, 1984 commentary. Good stuff, you guys. Thursday. Listen to the cast. This is a 1998 film. Great year for, 1998, great movie year. Getting near the end of what I would consider great movie years. Uh, people who are under 25 right now are just like, what is he talking about? I'm telling you guys, it had the end of the 90s. It, it, it was never quite the same. That second auteur wave. Um, listen to this cast: Thomas Jane, Aaron Eckhart, Paulina Partizkova, uh, James the Gross, and Mickey Rourke. I said Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Mickey. That's kind of hard for me to say for some reason. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one. I did not see this at the time in 1998, so this will be a discovery for me. And there's our special features and the text, the rear packaging text. Puzzle of a Downfall Child. Uh, Faye Dunaway in, in a 1970 film. This is it's just kind of early Faye Dunaway, right? Like This is getting around the... Why do I do this to myself? We're getting around like Bonnie and Clyde, you know, talk about a career that would just go on and on and on. Uh, Thomas Crown Affair, Chinatown. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's a 1970 film. It is uh, looking for the, the director. Why am I doing this? Stop, Heath. We got a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> Clearly my enthusiasm, my passion for this stuff. Like I'm leading with it. You can't fake it, right? Like it's it's legit. This is this is what I live to do. People will ask me sometimes, Heath, what's your favorite label? I can't really answer that. I have relationships with so many companies. I know everybody's doing their best work, but I do tend to find myself very drawn to labels and distributors that don't specialize in one genre, but they specialize in lots of different things. And Kino Lorber clearly does exactly that so uh this gets me very excited because we can talk like they do silence they do animation you know pink panther cartoons and the uh the, the like fritz freeling and stuff i love it okay uh bodies rest and motion this may i'm gonna be bodies and rest bodies in motion phoebe cates bridget Fonda, tim roth eric stoltz i don't know it, it, i feel like it's a song uh it's a great cast of late 80s early 90s heartthrobs i guess um 1993 look at all the special features for this thing um very excited about spinning this disc and say look an audio commentary with the director with eric stoltz and the writer roger hedden new introduction with the director a new introduction with the screenwriter and then a 13 minute short uh, Night Watch from 1985, short film written and directed by Michael Steinberg, the uh, the director. So you get this movie and you get his his previous 1985 short film. This is amazing stuff. The Underneath, Peter Gallagher. Uh, also, uh, oh, Steven Soderbergh. Steven Soderbergh, great director. I'm thinking uh, Out of Sight is probably my favorite Soderbergh film, though I know like a lot of people say The Limey. Um, the Ocean's Eleven movies, uh, if, if th those are good. Anyway, 1995 Soderbergh movie, um, Peter Gallagher, um, Shelley Duvall and Elizabeth Shue are also in this. I, wanted, I knew I had some other names I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, we're still in the first stack. What am I doing? Hollywoodland. 
I adore this movie. I have always adored this movie. I saw this when it was new. Was this 90? Oh, 2006. Okay, I'm way off. I saw this when it was new. It's underappreciated. It's this is interesting too. For those of you who are like Zack Snyder Justice League fans or like you know modern era DC stuff, this is Ben Affleck playing George Reeves. Who see, I'm reviewing it. Why am I doing this? He's playing George Reeves, who's the actor that portrayed Superman on the Adventures of Superman television series. Uh, apparently died of suicide. It's There's some question. And this is sort of the story of Ben Affleck as the actor who played Superman. And Adrian Brody is investigating. He's kind of putting the whole thing together. And uh, Diane Lane, who would go on to be Superman's mom in the Zack Snyder films... Bob Hoskins, this is a fantastic movie. I, I have nothing, but it's an old Hollywood movie. You know I love old Hollywood. You know I love noir. Look, I, I like noir, kind of a noir fan. Man of the East, Terrence Hill, Spaghetti Western. Um, spaghetti Western style, I'll say that. Uh, Harry Carey, Gregor, okay. I gotta speed up. This is gonna be an hour and a half long. I gotta speed up. Uh, there's the back of the package. Terrence Hill is, of course, no stranger to the Italian or European Western. It's good stuff. The Knack and How to Get It. This is a Richard Lester movie from 65? 1965. Um, Richard Lester, director of The Hard Day's Night. Um, where's my Beatles stuff? If you'll allow me to show you another label really quick, I just think it's important. This is, of course, one of the um, one of those really, really important movies that uh, you know we it's it's a masterpiece. And I think Richard, the Beatles are of course a huge part of why it's a masterpiece. But Richard Lester gets he needs some credit for that too. And this is uh, a little bit after a hard day's night, and it's sort of about the changing times. It's it's a comedy. It's uh, it's good. It's really good. Look at the special features on this too. It's exciting. They came from beyond space. Great movie. This is Sabatsky, right? Milton Sabatsky. Yeah, produced by Max J. Rosenberg, Milton Sabatsky, Amicus, right? Those the guys, the competitor of Hammer, contemporary of Hammer films in the '60s, and in, and into the '70s as well, I guess. Um. This has a commentary with David Del Valle and filmmaker David Dakota. Both of those guys are, are great. That's the back of the package there. I will export this at the highest resolution possible so that you can hopefully see as much as you can. Um, there's been talk about Serial at Midnight going 4K so that you get like max. You can see the nose hairs and you can count my eyelashes and stuff. I'm not sure if we're ready for that. That's a little bit scary to me, but there's been talk. There's been discussion. The Public Eye, Joe Pesci, Barbara Hershey. Do you guys know I have Joe Pesci's autograph? I have a whole video about autographs. Um, if I remember, I'll link to it in the description of this video. But this is a 1992 movie. Some people say this is Joe Pesci's best performance. Uh, I know, I think a lot of people would probably look to Goodfellas, uh, but there's there's more there's more to Pesci than than we see in Goodfellas. That's a very specific kind of performance. So anyway, this look at look at Barbara Hershey. Look how beautiful. Uh, okay, the art of love. This one for the cast alone makes my heart happy. Makes it sing. It makes my heart sing like Ethel Merman. We got James Garner, we got Dick Van Dyke, we got Elkie Summer, and there's Angie Dickinson again. Uh, I mean, come on, you got Maverick and Rockford and Dick Van Dyke. Uh, do we? What do, do we go? Bert, Bert from Mary Poppins, and then people just get mad and start setting things on fire. Uh, anyway, it's a 1965 film. And those are the special features. All right, we're almost finished with stack number one. We're almost halfway there. Barcaro. Lee Van Cleef and Warren Oates, two of the coolest cucumbers ever put on film. Um, and how about just just the cover art alone? One, I need to mention, Kino Lorber often preserves original poster art or original art assets for the movies themselves. This is a perfect example of why you would want to do that, because it looks fantastic. Um, so here's the back of the back of the box. Doesn't look like we have any special features here, but we do have the movie in its original aspect ratio and in HD, which, for a movie fan, uh, 
it can't be taken for granted because, hey, I was there in the 80s and the 90s when that was not the case. If you wanted to get a movie in its original aspect ratio on VHS, it was a whole thing, and you paid a lot more for it. And they'd get, I, remember, I think I had the Untouchables VHS in its original widescreen. Uh, I've had a few others as well, but anyway, there I go again. Uh, okay, look, here's we're going to get back into studio classics and things like that, but I chose this at the halfway point for a reason. Kino Lober also does a lot of like documentary film and um, really in like important social issue films, like what's going on in the world. They have multiple arms. They have the Kino Lober Studio Classics line. They have a Kino. Lorber Classics, there's there's a lot of different stuff. So we're going to talk about, so we'll go through these quickly. There's a documentary about Ruth Bader Ginsburg with the involvement of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's a DVD. This is a film called Trafficked. Dean Cain, Christy Swanson. This is, of course, about kidnapping and human trafficking. Um, it's a new, I think it's 2020. Uh, yeah. There we go. So here's another Superman connection because Dean Cain played Superman in The Adventures of Lois and Clark. Christy Swanson was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Days of Bagnold, uh, Bag, Bagnold Summer? That's hard for me to say as well. This is about a single mom and a kid that loves Metallica and wants to play heavy metal. Soundtrack provided by Bell and Sebastian. Interesting, quirky. This is the kind of movie that was all over the place in the 90s. But of course... In the modern blockbuster studio-driven tentpole world, movies like this can easily fly under the radar. So kudos to Kino for picking these up. El Dorado, this is about uh, refugee, the refugee crisis. Um, what year is this? 2018 for this one. Incitement. Now, this is interesting, and I'm going to keep my editorializing to a minimum, but a chilling portrait, here's the pull quote from the Los Angeles Times, a chilling portrait of how fanaticism can grow and be enabled. And of course, this predates some of this. This is 2019, I think, so this is going to predate some of the things that we've seen in recent headlines, but uh, just goes to show that this is, you know, nothing's new. We've been dealing with some of this stuff for a very long time indeed. Corleone. Mafia and Blood. This is a two-part documentary. It totals about about two and a half hours. Two episodes totaling 152 minutes. Huh? Um, about uh, in 1993, the Godfather of all Godfathers, Toto Rina, is arrested in Palermo City, in Palermo, Sicily, marking the end of a 25-year manhunt and of a war that killed thousands between the Cosa Nostra and the Italian state. So it's a documentary about one of the largest and last uh, Italian Dons, Mafia affiliates. Very interesting stuff. Uh, here's the TV series, Babylon Berlin. This is a two-season, I believe there's a third season that's not here, that's available in a separate package, but this is seasons one and two. This was, uh, let's see, a lot of different people involved in this. It's, it's Berlin in 1929. Uh, it's one of the most critically acclaimed European TV shows of the decade. Sumptuously paranoid thriller set in 1929, Berlin, a metropolis of turmoil. Do you think it's a coincidence that they're talking about Berlin in the 20s and they use the word metropolis? I don't think it is. don't think it's a coincidence. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful set. I think it's a four disc, if I remember. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's four discs. Babylon, Berlin. All right. And there's behind-the-scenes footage. Here, I'll hold that up in case you guys want to read that. Or freeze, freeze it. Freeze. Uh, Marseille, or Marseille, however you would like to say this. This is Gerard, Gerard Depardieu, um, <laughs> who is himself a musketeer, right? Was he in the Man in the Iron Mask? Is um, was he Porthos, Athos, Aramis, I don't remember which one he played, but uh, this is a modern political thriller. Uh, the longtime mayor of Marseille is preparing to hand over the reins to his protege when a sudden and ruthless battle erupts for control of the city. This is the entire series. I think it was a two-season series as well. Um, one, two, three, four discs. Okay. Back to the studio classics. And this is where we'll end it all. We're going to end it all 
on the Studio Classics. <laughs> Diary of a Diary of a Mad Housewife. This is a uh, 1970 movie with Frank Langella, uh, Richard Benjamin. Um, haven't seen this one yet. I, I'm curious. I'm very, especially with Frank Lang Langella involved. Let me flip it over and show you the rear artwork. Paul Newman in The Secret War of Harry Frigg. Paul Newman as well. Uh, his work gets a lot of accolades for his bigger hits. You know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, I love him in Road to Perdition because we've already established I love like crime movies and noir style movies. Uh, but Paul Newman as a leading man in the 60s and even into the 70s was unparalleled. I mean, he was just so charming and so fantastic. So this is 1968. Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, a.k.a. the Devil's Dog, I believe. Michael Pataki, Reggie Nadler. This is a band, uh, Albert Band. Um, isn't Albert Band... Charles Band's father, the full moon, uh, I mean, how deep do you want to go? The guy, that guy, Charles Band. Um, isn't Albert Band his father? It's kind of a family affair, and then his brother's involved in things too. Anyway, this is a 1977 film. I believe this one has, well, here, I'll show you the back of the package. I believe this one has, yes, we have reversible artwork. So there's that. There's our reverse art. Which one do you guys like better? We'll do the eye doctor test. Better here, better here. Better here, better here. Or about the same. Better here, better here. I like this one better. I'm going to flip it. And they have a different title too, right? Dracula's Dog. Oh, this is the, even the spine is different. So Dracula's Dog. There we go. Dracula's Dog. There we go. Eh, I'll leave it like this for now. I want some feedback on that, guys. All right. Uh, the World is Full of Secrets. This is a Kino Orber release from 20... Oh, geez. 2018, it looks like. Uh, no, 2020. This packaging is 2020. The World is Full of Secrets is a devilishly creepy film about a group of girls telling scary stories in the dark. An old woman's voice recalls a terrible event from her distant past. Okay, there you go. Scary Stories in the Dark. And it's called The World is Full of Secrets. Any reversible artwork here? No, but we do have... A booklet and Lord knows I love a booklet so boom look at all that text too love booklets love them okay the Greek tycoon Anthony Quinn who is it Jacqueline Bissett oh my goodness you guys Jacqueline Bissett um, what year is this 1978 this is a um, Scorpion releasing. You know, this is here's this is important. Kino Lorber distributes some other companies' products as well, including Scorpion releasing. They also distribute. It's a good time to jump over to this. Code Red. Well, okay, but let's see one more Scor Scorpion. So the Norseman, which is amazing. This is uh, uh, Lee Majors, the the six million dollar man, 1978. That's kind of, I guess that's kind of peak. Peak Lee Majors, right? That's between, that's during the success of the Six Million Dollar Man. Predates the Fall Guy. Um, anyway, incredible stuff, right? Like that's, this is, love it, absolutely love it. That's Scorpion. This is Code Red. Uh, a cr the cr a Cry of a Prostitute. Henry Silva, Barbara Boucher. Barbara Boucher is great. Um, she pops up in several co other Code Red releases too, if my memory serves. Henry Silva is, of course, a legend for genre film and for uh, just on-screen tough guy cool. This is a 19... Uh, I don't see it. I'm just going to hold up the back of the box. because We got to move on, guys. We got to move on. Okay. Continental Divide. John Belushi. Blair Brown. Kind of a opposites attract kind of a thing. It's Belushi doing something different. Belushi often did different kinds of things. He was not always the Bluto from, you know, the, the Animal House guy, the Blues Brothers guy. He also did, like, very quiet, like, family guy style roles where he would play, like, the typical dad or whatever. 
Because I think he liked to subvert that. So he gets to play kind of a straight man in this, and then things go sideways. I'm reviewing 1981. There's the special features. All right, we're almost done, you guys. This is the double feature of The Other Side of the Mountain 1 and 2. Uh, what are the years on these? Uh, they're both rated PG, uh, 1975 and 1978. And believe it or not, we've got an interview with the director. There's also a special, you get two movies and an interview with the director, which is crazy. I mean, it's crazy cool. I don't mean like, why would they do that? It's nice. Here's another double feature. Uh, this is a Western double feature with um, The Man from Del Rio and The Ride Back couple of uh, B-Westerns from uh, United Artists, looks like, is who hold these at this point. The Associates in Aldrich Company. So is this Robert Aldrich involved in this? Oh, man. Written by William Conrad. Produced by William Conrad. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Letting my passion lead again. You know, Heath, he's so passionate. The Hills Run Red. There's Henry Silva again, Dan Dan Derea, and uh, Thomas Hunter. Now Dan Derea is another Western staple um, that I just have so much admiration for. Pops up in you know like he's an episode of Gunsmoke, probably like ten episodes of Gunsmoke, but <laughs> so much respect for these guys. Second to last, you know what? I'm gonna save that. And we'll do that one last. Uh, Anna Lucasta. This is another Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, starring. Well, he, Eartha Kitt is our star, but Sammy Davis Jr. is in here as well. Um, this is a 1958 film. Uh, I believe this one is also steeped in. No, I'm not going to speculate. Watch for it in a future review, Palooza. And last, but certainly not least, my science project on Blu-ray. I have the DVD. I'm so excited that I can upgrade it to the Blu-ray now, to, to the high definition, the real deal. John Stockwell, Fisher Stevens, Dennis Hopper. Uh, 1985, we've got an audio commentary, and we've got uh, an interview with Fisher Stevens. So that's it. I think that video that we just, I think what we just did, that episode that we've just wrapped here. Hey guys, I think that that episode does a really good job of showing the scope and the breadth of what Kino Lorber does, the different genres, the different styles, not locked into a particular era, not locked into a particular style. And I love that. They got the horror, they got the science fiction, they got exploitation, they've got serious films, they've got art films, documentary films. I've made my point, right? So to our anonymous benefactor, thank you again very, very much. This video would not have been possible without you. And uh, keep your eyes peeled to Serial at Midnight for future sale announcements. I, I believe there's another Kino Lorber sale coming in June. So mark your calendars and keep, keep your eyes peeled for that. And of course, we're going to be reporting on all this stuff when it happens. So stay tuned to Serial at Midnight for all the latest and breaking news, reviews, and coverage. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging out, making it to the... If you made it to the end of this video, you're a rock star. You're, you know what? You're, you're, you're pure Serial at Midnight goodness, awesomeness. I don't know. Guys, thanks. Take care. And until next time, I will catch you later.